Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies and how their stock price targets have been cut and slashed. Recently, professionals have reiterated that they are lowering their stock price predictions for this company over the next 12 months. A prime example of this is Wed Bush, which is a very well-respected financial institution, has lowered their overall price target from $8 down to $6 on Wednesday, according to MarketBeat, which is very bad news. Now, if you remember in a previous video, I predicted that analysts and professionals, as well as experts in this sector, will be lowering lowering SoFi Technologies overall price targets due to the student loan moratorium being extended and the student loan forgiveness debacle. On top of this, we also have another institution which also lowered their overall price target for SoFi Technologies and their share price. For instance, Mizuo lowered their price target from $7 down to $6 per share, just like Wed Bush. We can see that they are pretty much in agreement about that $6 price target. However, if if we anticipate that the stock price will be worth $6 over the next 12 months, technically there is still some upside here because as of right now, the SoFi share price is trading at around $4.50, so we could make up a pretty good return jumping from $4.50 to $6 if these analysts turn out to be right. On the opposite end, we have other professionals and experts in this field saying that the SoFi Technologies stock price could surge as high as $10 per share which is exactly what this video actually dives into and analyzes. Now, to be totally transparent, I only have around a 4% allocation to SoFi Technologies because I like to manage my risk by not investing all in into a risky single growth company such as SoFi Technologies, but it was such a good investment opportunity to me based on their fundamentals that I decided to give them a 4% allocation to my overall portfolio. The reason why we've been seeing so much uncertainty, not only in the market, but regarding SoFi Technologies share price is because the macroeconomic conditions are making it practically impossible for SoFi Technologies to hold its value in 2022. If you're not familiar with this company already, they are a neo banking form or a fintech company, also known as a financial technology company, which offers their consumers an all in one inclusive digital app, which gives them access to various financial services and financial products. Essentially, SoFi is a digital bank which is trying to dethrone legacy banks by being more convenient and being more digitalized to usher in a new era of banking. They also have various products where you can invest into stocks as well as cryptocurrencies, which will help them adapt to younger consumers. SoFi Technologies actually targets young high earners that make over $100,000 per year and have credit scores of over 750. This means that this particular company is not likely to be impacted during a recession because their consumers are extremely stable and unlikely to default on any of their loans. Now, the reason why the share price is falling right now is because the Federal Reserve has actually raised interest rates multiple times to get inflation under control, and this by default is discouraging the borrowing and lending activities from consumers to banks and vice versa. Furthermore, higher inflation has made it difficult for growth stocks and growth companies, and it's also making it harder for individuals to save and invest. And clearly, individuals are going to use fintech companies or banks to invest or save their money and that has become very difficult due to rising inflation. Now, the problem is that the Federal Reserve is in charge of getting inflation under control, but they can only do that by continuously increasing interest rates, which will again negatively impact borrowing from individuals and lending activities from banks. This would include SoFi Technologies. So SoFi Technologies is getting hit three times over. One, they're a bank, and it's impacting their number one revenue stream, which is their lending segment. On top of that, they are a growth company to where they are taking on a lot of debt right now. Their short-term debt currently is around $3 billion, so they can invest this money into themselves and hopefully grow and pay off that debt later in the future. Now, this is a problem because as interest rates rise, this could negatively impact how much they owe on their debt or if they decide to take out more debt to grow their company. So, this is impacting financial institutions, growth companies, and particularly fintech and banking companies that focus on their lending segment, and SoFi falls under all three of those. 
so they are getting hit three times over, which is what is bringing the stock price down. If we add on top of that, the Fed investigating SoFi technologies for their cryptocurrencies and the student loan moratorium being extended on top of student loan forgiveness, we have a perfect storm which will weigh the SoFi stock price down very effectively, where some experts believe the company will drop down to $3 per share. Now, this would make it a better buying opportunity because some investors believe that a $5 price target for this company is a bargain to get your average cost basis around $5, but the timing is critical for long-term investors. And if you want to be a successful investor, you need to be able to weigh your risk, but also identify when it's a good buying opportunity and when you are overexposing yourself to a company. Like I said earlier, I only have a 4% allocation to this company because I have a very well diversified portfolio, which is why my portfolio is green right now, while a lot of people's portfolios are in the red. Another thing to keep in mind regarding this company is some people have a very high average cost basis for SoFi Technologies around $10. And these people originally invested when the stock price was way too high. This means they have around a 20% allocation at a $10 average price point. So they think that just by averaging down or dollar cost averaging down their average cost basis for this company is a wise move so they can get it closer to around $3 to $5. The problem with this is as they dollar cost average down their cost basis from $10 down to $5 or $3, their over overall allocation to this company will increase, thus making them overexposed to unnecessary risk. Because as they average down and buy more shares to lower their cost, their allocation for this company is going to go up to potentially 30 or even 40% of their portfolio, which is way too high. That is not proper risk management. For single risky growth stocks, a 5% allocation is a healthy allocation, and anything above that means you're taking on unnecessary risk. This is why I personally, when I invest into a company, I normally only have an initial investment between 1-2% to and then I use the remaining percentages to dollar cost average down my cost basis until I reach that ceiling of 5%. Now naturally, if the SoFi stock price and share price increase in their overall price, for example, if I have a $5 average cost basis and then it ends up going to $10, my 5% allocation will shoot up to a 10% allocation. However, I can look back and say, hey, I don't need to liquidate these shares because I only spent an initial 5% allocation which turned into a 10% allocation. So I still have a proper risk management in place as well as stop losses on this particular company. This is what a multitude of investors don't understand by weighing proper risk management on top of being able to lower their average cost basis and they normally do this out of order which is impacting investors very negatively especially while the overall stock price is falling for SoFi Technologies and the general stock market. However, the good news is that investors should anticipate that SoFi Technologies will bounce back in price eventually as they continuously expand their membership base and their revenues. As SoFi Technologies brings in more members, naturally their revenues will increase due to their flywheel business model to where once they attract a member or a consumer, they will cross-sell and upsell them different items. For instance, if a member comes in just for a place to hold their money because SoFi is offering a very high interest rate and they actually pay people to hold money in a checking or savings account, then SoFi Technology is going to use this opportunity and relationship to also potentially sell this customer on a credit card or maybe an investing opportunity. And this is where their flywheel business model of cross-selling and upselling is going to be very advantageous to them, but it's all contingent upon them bringing in more members. Luckily, SoFi has managed to build its membership count very aggressively quarter over quarter, to where now they have around a 4.7 million member base. On top of that, this has directly impacted their revenue positively. For instance, in quarter 3 of 2022, their revenue grew by 56%, which is absolutely outstanding. This is a huge revenue CAGR, or compounding annual growth rate, to where for that quarter they brought in nearly $424 million. Essentially, we would want to identify high-growing companies that could maintain a 30% CAGR for the next five years, but SoFi is clearly meeting that expectation, which means as this company continues to grow, their share price should eventually keep up with this. Now, this also depends on how long 
you plan to hold this company. If you don't know your time horizon, you should probably estimate that. For me, I am content with my 4% allocation. If it drops down to $3, or if a reverse stock split is done, I will wait for the company to drop lower in price, and then I will average down my average cost basis until I reach a 5% allocation, and then I'm just going to let the company ride from then on out, and I'm going to move on to another company. But this is all part of a proper risk management policy that I have in place. The company also is not currently profitable, so some investors may want to wait until this company proves themselves and becomes profitable. The current projections for profitability says that SoFi, according to their financial forecasts, could become profitable at the end of 2024. However, we could see a reiteration of this due date for profitability ever since the student loan moratorium was extended and the student loan forgiveness plan. So just like those two things are impacting the analysts projections and stock price predictions for this company, which lowered from around eight to seven dollars down to six dollars per share, this could also lower their overall ability to reach profitability by 2024, which will again cause the stock price to fall even lower. So you really need to be wise about when you jump into a risky speculative company. However, at the end of this article, the author says that you should do your own research before jumping in to an investment like SoFi Technologies, but he also says to keep an eye on SoFi Technologies' overall membership growth, which will positively impact their overall revenue, income levels, and earnings per share. Now, what I don't like about this article, and this is just a pet peeve, the author didn't give us any reason why SoFi Technologies would surge to $10. Now, I like to have these price targets somewhat backed by financial data. Say that a huge catalyst is coming up which will propel the stock price to $10 per share based upon the revenues that they are supposed to bring in from this catalyst. Now, even a temporary news catalyst such as an earnings report can temporarily increase the stock price to where it will go up and then come back down and stabilize at a higher price than what it formerly was. But in this article the author does not address why the company is worth $10 per share. If anything he's actually nudging investors to wait for this company to prove themselves first, which is definitely a wiser position to take in this company, which again is why I only have a 4% allocation to this company, but you always need to do your own research, which should be dependent on your own risk tolerance and your investing strategy. I also know that a lot of new investors watch this channel, and if you are a new investor, this company probably shouldn't even be on your radar, I'll tell you why. You first should, at least in my opinion, build your core holdings for your portfolio, which to me should make up anywhere between 40 and 80% of your overall portfolio. These should be very strong ETFs, index funds, or mutual funds. The ones I normally recommend for people starting out to build a core investment, which will prevent them from losing money and will also build wealth over the long term, would be ticker symbol VOO, which is an ETF which tracks the S&P 500. You could do VTI. This is a very large stock market investment, which is broader than VOO, but it still has a similar growth trajectory. And then lastly, whether or not you pick VOO or VTI, some people like to buy them both, some do one or another, because VTI literally holds VOO within it, and then I would throw in a dividend growth or a growth dividend ETF like MTUM or SCHD, but those are just the ones that I recommend for newer investors to first build a large allocation and a core investment so your portfolio has a foundation before you start to invest into risky singular growth companies. After you master for probably a year or two, investing consistently into very strong e either mutual funds, ETFs, or index funds, moving on to a blue chip company or blue chip stocks are also going to add safety to your portfolio. These would be companies like Alphabet, Amazon, Google, Meta Platforms, PayPal, Walmart, Target, Visa, American Express, MasterCard, Microsoft, Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, and a plethora of others. Once you have those core holdings also in your portfolio, feel free to look at some safe value stocks than dividends, and then after that, about a couple years of investing into those core investments, then moving over to more singular risky companies is going to be better for you instead of overexposing yourself just to one singular company or even a couple singular companies that could not work out. And then you have thrown away all of this opportunity cost in terms of the time that you spent and the money that you spent on these investments that didn't work out. This is why I always advocate for a very diversified portfolio, but I have other videos that go more into detail on what 
what I personally buy in my strategies if you want to copy that or even get some inspiration for that. But that is the news update for SoFi Technologies for today. Remember to go and smash that like button for more videos just like this one. Comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.